Hello, I'm Brent Stafford, and this is the Weekly Market Wrap-Up, brought to you by Crush the Street and Viral Network News. The markets rallied this week, with the Dow Jones breaking yet another record, crossing the 16,000 mark for the first time on Thursday. There was some volatility this week, as the market had a scare on Wednesday when equity valuations sharply corrected. However, Thursday brought on a quick reversal. The Dow jumped nearly 104 points on Thursday to close at a record 16,009. The benchmark S&P 500 also closed up at 1,795 points, up over three quarters of a percent, and now within three points of its record close. Finally, the tech-heavy Nasdaq outperformed with an advance of 1.2 percent, closing at 3,969. The record-breaking close of the Dow marks what is the third thousand-point milestone this year, up now 22 percent overall. This puts the Dow on track for its best year in a decade. The rally in the markets has been helped by Janet Yellen, whose nomination to be the next head of the Federal Reserve was approved by the Senate Banking Committee on Thursday and now heads to the Senate floor. Yellen has assured Congress that the Fed will continue to support the economy and won't ease up on their bond-buying stimulus program yet. Most analysts believe the Fed will not consider QE tapering until March at the earliest. All right, let's talk currencies and check in on the Forex markets. The U.S. dollar index was under pressure for the first half of the week, but was immediately lifted following Wednesday's release of their FOMC minutes. Currently, the greenback is trading slightly below the 81 level as traders digest the recent kink in the market dynamics. The dollar-yen pair soared during overseas trading as the Bank of Japan reiterated its loose monetary policy and affirmed that modest improvements in the economy were being witnessed. As a response, the Japanese stock market jumped up nearly 2% higher from its prior session. The euro took a nosedive on Wednesday after starting off the week on a modest incline. The European Central Bank is likewise committed to expanding their monetary base and one beneficiary has been Germany where their stock market continues to build off their record-setting momentum. Well, that's it for currencies. Let's turn now to winners and losers and our picks for the week. The winner this week is JCPenney, ticker symbol JCP. JCPenney, who was our loser back in both August and September, returns this week as the winner. After losing more than 67% in valuation from the beginning of this year until mid-October, JCP has staged a remarkable comeback. On Wednesday, shares popped up more than 8%, putting to rest fears of an imminent bankruptcy. However, it does have to be noted that JCP intends to stage a recovery by sacrificing margins for the holiday season, a strategy that is fraught with risk. The loser for this week is Best Buy, ticker symbol BBY. Last week, Best Buy shares were trading around $44, but eventually dropped down to a low of $38.70, Following their earnings report, which despite beating the EPS forecast by six cents, the company warned of a Q4 margin hit at the higher end of prior estimates. Best Buy, like many retailers approaching the holiday season, is desperate to gain momentum and is prepared to sacrifice margins on key products like game consoles to get consumers into their physical stores. Here's Breakout's Jeff Mackey. They've come into Best Buy and they're buying low margin products. Those consoles have zero margin, almost nothing. It, it's you're giving them away. Yeah. But what you're doing, as it being a physical store, is you're getting guys in the store and they're gonna oh, oh. spend 400 bucks. They're not stores, they're showrooms. They, they are showrooms, they're embracing showrooms. And you know what they're showrooms for? A bunch of stuff with margins. And so go get your console, but you know what, on the way, buy That's game. It. Buy an extra controller, because those have margins. Why don't you get, hey, why not a television? Because it's going to look terrible. Your little high-def box is going to look awful unless you get a new TV. They're going to come into the stores for the fourth quarter because of the consoles. It all comes down to that. Forget the 5% movement in the stock today. It's whether or not Best Buy is going to be able to translate all those customers coming in the stores for the consoles into high-margin sales. While those are our winners and losers this week, now we want you to weigh in. You tell us in the comments section below what company you think is the top pick and the stinker for the week. Well, last but not least, let's turn to precious metals, which again got hammered this week. Gold was taken down by bearish trading activity following speculation that the Fed will taper down its QE program sooner than anticipated. The yellow metal is precipitously hanging below the 1,250 level, and it is in need of a lifeline to get it back above technical support lines. Silver also got hammered, but actually fared slightly better than gold on a percentage basis. Still, an important support line was breached when it dipped below the $20 level, and it too is in need of some help. 
Finally, palladium softened under the bearish conditions of the metal sector. Although its losses were half of that suffered in the gold market on a percentage basis, still there are concerns about palladium's long-term sustainability as selling volume has been particularly heavy in recent days. And that wraps it up. Thanks again so much for joining us for another Weekly Market Wrap-Up. Before you head out for the weekend, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and find us on Facebook and Twitter. For Viral Network News and Crush the Street, I'm Brent Stafford.